If you wake up every morning with a smile on your face, then that's great. Once upon a time, people did have a little bit more time for reflection. What we found is that the economy has increased in pace, our lives have increased in pace in order to keep up. I think the average person on the street is afraid of suffering. They want to do all they can to get rid of it. Suffering is often the organism's response to something bad that is holding us back. It's the organism's protest against difficult conditions. So confronting suffering can be a good thing, essentially because suffering can change us for the good. I'm going to explore the different ways we avoid suffering in the pursuit of happiness and how these ways have actually made our suffering worse. Frenetic activity is a peculiarity of our time. People's lives are becoming increasingly busy and full, and it leaves them no time at all for reflection, for thinking about their lives. People think it's a good thing to keep yourself busy during a time of crisis. In actual fact, it's a very bad thing. It's perhaps the worst thing you can do. The only way we can overcome the problem is by confronting it directly, not running away from it. Take grieving, for example. One of the common things we hear is, you know, just get on with it, get out there, you'll feel better soon, give yourself some time, just get on with your life. But this actually ignores the fact that going through the grieving process is essential to letting go. If you don't mourn, you stay attached and you can't move on. Look, we, we tend to think being busy is innately virtuous, you know, we're economically rewarded for being busy, but it puts us under a huge amount of strain. Shopping is a modern and seemingly ever-increasing addiction. It has become the bedrock of family life in Britain, fulfilling an incredible range of roles to make us more attractive, to demonstrate our success, to fill an empty Sunday, and to make us more happy. Usually, this feeling better lasts for a short time, and when it goes, we need to go back to the mall back to the shopping centre in order to get that fix and good feeling back. Rather than investing our time and energy in actually doing those things that will make us more productive, make us more loving, make us more, in a sense, ostensibly, attractive. Recently we've been fixated with the demise of Jade Goody. We've also been interested in how she used the media. Some people say it was out of greed, some people say it was out of a desire for attention, others have said that it was to help her children. But I'm more interested in how we use Jade Goody to help ourselves. So this is strange, isn't it, in a culture where people sort of often try and run away from their suffering, but at the same time, they like to watch suffering, view other people going through it. Mm. But I don't think it's not in a horrible way, I mm. suppose. It's mm. just more just like, it, like sort of fascination, I suppose, how she coping with it all, how the kids coping with it all. Do you think they also felt that she served a kind of role model for them? Like, yeah, definitely. She was something they could actually aspire to. They all said the same sort of thing. She was very down to earth. You know, she was a celebrity who had quite a lot of money, very famous, yet you kind of felt like you could reach out and touch her. Why do you think there was that other side to the media saying, maybe we should back away from this? Well, I think because she... I mean, I don't know, because I can't speak for anyone apart really from Radio 1, and I know why we covered it is because she's very target for us, you know, she is a celebrity and that's very, very target for us. Drugs, and particularly prescription drugs, are the most obvious way we avoid suffering, deliberately altering how the mind works so it no longer feels pain, while keeping the problems that cause the pain unaddressed and unresolved. Look, if people are taking antidepressants and also thinking about 
why they got into that difficult situation in the first place, that's okay. But if people are actually taking antidepressants to not think about those things, to avoid the suffering and the thoughtfulness, then they become all the more problematic. As a psychotherapist in the NHS, I have seen firsthand how patients who've been using antidepressants for long periods are far more inclined to believe that it is their brains causing their problems and not their psychology, their environment or their lifestyle. The impact of antidepressants is very problematic because it's actually a manufactured, it's an engineered happiness. It's not a natural response, it's a response to the chemicals you're taking. And of course, when you stop taking these pills and chemicals, then what happens to the brain? Well, the brain most likely is going to revert to its original mode of functioning, which of course will bring with it the original pain and suffering. Well, I'd like to explore what happens when we remove these props and these distractions and when we actually confront suffering head on. I mean, I want to show that when we do confront suffering, there can be something of real value that we can get from it. Suffering can help you understand the problems in your relationship, the problems with your job, where you need to change your life in order to make it better. I'd like to essentially explore community, 